Hi, my name is Glory. I'm a second year student studying at the Bartlett School of Architecture in London, originally from Hong Kong. And I'm Yan Shan, a second year architecture student, and I'm into musicals, oil painting, movies, and embarrassingly into self help and Richie Biscuits. You are listening to Designing Thoughts with the Archie Gals, a podcast where we talk about working and creativity, living well, the human condition with relationships, and life experiences. Before we get into the podcast, I would just like to ask for a small favor. It would mean a lot to us if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or leave a comment on our YouTube channel just to let us know how you feel about the podcast and other topics you'd be interested in hearing in. Hi everyone, welcome back to our podcast. So I'm your host Gloria and this is my co-host Yan Shan. And today we're going to be talking about friendships and everything related to it. So we're mostly going to talk about you know, like our experiences of friendship in university and life and how we cope with friendships and just everything in general. So I guess we can start off with what do we look for in a friendship and what does a friend mean to you, like the definition of a friend? Yeah, so when you, I think when I think of like what I look for in a friend, I think of when I started uni and what I looked for like on the first day of school, like going to uni and also like going into moving into the dorm and then Mm -hmm. so I think what I looked for a lot was the where they're from and how which which I think is is not great like I feel like the main thing that people should look for would be like personality but I think I also put a lot of emphasis on like where they're from and where they're brought up what kind of school they went to and like knowing their background before really like to judge to have a baseline of what the personality is like before Mm -hmm. deciding to be friends with them but I think also I do judge a lot of things by like the vibe. So if I start talking to them and then they seem friendly and receptive, then that really is good for me as well. Okay. Well, actually, like now that you mention it, I never really think about that many like things to consider when I'm thinking about a friend. I think I probably think about it subconsciously, like at the back of my mind, but like it's not very obvious conscious to me like when I see them I'm like oh where, where are they from like what's their background what's their upbringing like I don't really think about that I think I think those things kind of form the vibe you're talking about and that kind of makes up for if we, I vibe with this person or not it's kind of like the whole Asians gather together thing like because they have share the same culture so they're more likely to hang out together which is I guess sometimes it makes me more happy and like surprised that I'm also able to hang out with people of different cultures I think it's nice to see like those type of things and but at the same time it really focuses on the vibe and like the personality and how we get along so I think mostly for me it's about the personality and like vibe but at the same time I think the other elements you mentioned come into play but for me it's subconscious yeah and I think also it depends on like how how and under what circumstance you make friends because you don't always make friends from knowing someone from zero as in you move you go to a new school then like it's like a networking session or something so like that's Mm -hmm. one way but I feel like most of the time the way that I find the friends I really like is like through being forced to hang out with them through school or something and then yeah yeah. so I guess it's like two ways like either like you make the effort after getting to know them and realizing that you you might be friends with this person in other ways like because it organically grew already anyway yeah I think that's fair to say and I guess that makes me glad that there's all those situations where you're forced to hang out with people. So you're kind of, you're put into lots of different situations where you're forced to interact with people. So you kind of, friendships just kind of happen, which is nice, you know? So like, I guess when you're really scared of going to certain events, you can always have that thought at the back of your mind, like, oh, I'm going to meet new people. I might make some new friends. But yeah. So what is your definition of a friend? Like, what does a friend mean to you? Because it might be different for pe- different people. Yeah, I think it's different for both of us. Because to me, I feel like I'm kind of utilitarian because friend just kind of means that someone that I gain value from by hanging out with them. And so mm-hmm. the value is like, if for some people, it's like them being dependable and always knowing that they're going to be there for me or someone that I enjoy talking to and can talk to about almost anything. But also it could be like more shallow things like someone that I would just rather be than be alone or someone that I would I want to go to do a certain thing with that no one else wants to do with me or sometimes even this is quite bad but I think especially in high school it comes down to like people you want to be seen with or like people you want to yeah you want to be friends with rather than people you are friends with 
Yeah, that's true. I think it definitely changes over time as well. So like for me, I think it's like you said. I think for me, it's more about the the value that I derive from friends. It's like someone I can rely on, and it really focuses on like the quality of our conversation. Like if I feel like my conversations are not satisfying, or I don't derive any value for them, or I don't really gain a new perspective on things, then I don't find value in that conversation. So the friendship doesn't seem to be something that's valuable to me. So usually that would that would end up to be like more acquaintance, you know, type of thing. But um, yeah, I think it's just someone that you know will be there for you at your hardest times, and someone that you can almost share everything with. I think that's me, but that's like my personal thing because I know for some people they're kind of like social butterflies, like they enjoy having a lot of friends. But for me, like I tend to be a like I tend to like to have a small group of friends, and I like hanging out with people one on one, so I can have like quality conversations with them. So I guess kind of like this, like I like having nice conversations with people. So yeah. That's kind of what's important to me. I think that's and, interesting because that's like to me that would be like one category of friend, and then mm-hmm. there are also other categories which are more shallow. But it's also <laughs> like for other purposes. I don't know. I think it's just different as well. Yeah. No. I think there's definitely different types of friendship. I guess we can talk about our experiences in uni because, I mean, we're both in university, and I think like you said, like it was very different compared to like say high school. So. For me, I felt like uni. I think maybe this is something that I don't particularly like about uni. It's like the culture of making friends and like the sort of mm. environment you're thrown in to making friends. It's just my personal opinion, but I feel like uni friends tend to be like very short lasting because mm. people like people hype up university, right? So like when you're thrown into university into such a like huge pool of people. People kind of expect you to make friends in a short period of time. Like you see people posting like, "Oh, freshers," um, mm-hmm. like within like a month, they're like, "Oh my god, these are all my friends." You know, like they take pictures of like big groups of people. Mm-hmm. And then I think even before going into uni, people kind of have this expectation that freshers and uni is gonna be great. You're gonna make tons of friends. But in reality, like, okay, this is my experience, but I didn't really vibe with that type of culture because. I sort of prefer more intimate relationships where you're able to talk, like what I said, and have meaningful like connections. I feel like, but whereas I feel like freshers and uni is just very rushed. Like you feel like you have to make friends in a short period of time, so it just doesn't last long for me. I feel like like I need to have a certain amount of time where you're hang out with that person, have conversations, do things together, and then that sort of builds the friendship up. And mm-hmm. then you're able to sustain it, whereas mm-hmm. the sort of freshers type of you know uni large group of people friendships tend to be short lasting. At least for me, it's not as rewarding because I can confidently say that during freshers week, all the people I hung out with, I never talked to them ever again. Like afterwards, so <laughs> so it, that but that's just my experience. Like I don't doubt there's probably some people who like probably met their best friend for life in like freshers week or something. Like it's probably true, but I just. It wasn't for me the culture. I don't know what you think. Mm. Like, what do you? I think? think I think that's because you don't like clubbing and drinking. <laughs> so, more the activity <laughs> than the people. Also, it could okay. be. I, I feel like the activity forces you to 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 be with those kind of people as well. So I, I get what you mm. mean. Yeah. But yeah, like for example, some of my friends, or even I, have like a group of friends who are my clubbing friends, mm. who I go to do those things with. But that's because I like the activity and. I also know that it's quite different kind of relationship from like mm. talking being picked up. So I think it's just because maybe you don't enjoy the activity in particular. Okay, to be fair, I I guess this brings up a good point of that's why you join societies with activities you like, so you find like minded people. But then again, like I kind of slightly disagree with like I don't like clubbing and stuff because I think <laughs> it depends on who I go with. It's kind of like what you said, like you have a certain group of people that you go with. Like, I think it really depends on the people I go with because I think the culture, at least for us in, like, London and, like, UK with freshers was sort of, like, hang out with a large group of people that you don't know. And usually and from your hall or, like... Yeah, and you go clubbing with them. Yeah, just because you stay there. Yeah, but the thing for me is I feel like, for me, in order to have fun, like, when I go clubbing, it really mm. depends on who I go with because yeah. I remember going with you and your friends and I had a ton of fun just going. So... yeah. It depends on who the group of people is, but do you do you are you still friends with people you've met in Freshers Week though? Oh, I actually didn't make many friends in Freshers Week either, so I actually have not wanted to talk. I just 
think that like there is some value in those kind of friendships but at the same time I don't really know anyone okay let me think do I I I think I think I do sometimes it's like just but those are people that I vibed with anyway Mm. it and we vibe outside of it as well so I guess I see your point but I think it's also I'm not sure whether it's a like a a different experience from because I guess what you mentioned was that it's like you're sold this idea that when you go to college or university then it would be a really social experience especially the first few weeks but I think compared to what we expected it to be it was a lot less social or maybe it could just be because it's like a London uni and everyone is like pretty spa- like stretched out. It's a campus. It's like a city uni. It's not a campus uni, mm. so people are quite spaced out. And yeah, we didn't have much meals with our our flatmates or dorm mates, and also that made it more hard to become friends with them. Yeah, and I think it's also the culture that when you go to uni, because I think uh for university students like they realize they have so much more responsibilities like they have to take care of themselves they have to like buy food they have to do this do that just lots of errands to run so you, it's not like in high school or like secondary school where you're just in class together and you're just there with them you have like other things to do and there's no more strict schedule that's like holding you together you know but it also like pressure cooked the friends that you were that you liked though because i feel like even for us because we were we were we had nowhere to go home like we have no one to go home to Mm. and you cannot just not make friends if you spend a lot of time in the studio for example or if you spend a lot of time oh yeah it's like it's also just hard to not make friends because then you actually be quite lonely without a family to be around so then because of that you're forced to know people really well really fast and then Mm get close really fast because also you do things like cook together which you never do and then you sleep over each other's houses which is also like a very advanced stage friendship in like a high school but at uni it's like yeah. yeah I'll just do it yeah yeah actually that's true like the whole like kind of like you get close really fast type of thing because I think with us and our group of friends like we got close really quickly and it never really happened to me like in high school because like what you said like it takes time to build up that level of friendship but because everyone was like I want to make friends and like find a group of people that I belong in so it the friendship escalates like really quickly yeah and, <laughs> yeah crazy. and then I was I was surprised but like I enjoyed it though but mm-hmm. it, the speed would would be something that would never happen if it was in high school you yeah. Know? yeah yeah that's true so what do you think mm, why would you call that like a strong friendship though I guess like I, I guess it's like what do you think cons- made it seem like a really deep friendship to you towards the end because it's only six I mean, months it was like yeah. so because of because of covid basically we be, and for because in first year we only had half a year of first year basically but our group of friends managed to get close like really fast so within six months like Yanchan said but yeah i think for me like it was a strong friendship because first of all we we're in the same course And we were able, like, lots of things we can relate to each other already. Like, the things we said, we don't need to explain it. We just knew what we were talking about. So there were lots of, like, I guess, inside jokes type of thing that we can just relate. And the other thing is just, I guess, like, good communication. Like, we were kind of just on the same wavelength. We could vibe with the things we were doing. And then we sort of just respected each other and, like, gave each other good comments on our projects. Like, I think we just had things in common. And when we... But we were also able to, like, bond over, like, deep things that happened to us. And then we just, you know, have good conversations over dinner and stuff. And then I think just the action of being able to talk about personal things and then the the other party being there to listen, it's, like, a really strong indicator for me. And I think that was what was really important between us and also, like, our mutual friends. Yeah. I think it's interesting that that's... Yeah, I, I think that's definitely true for that group of friends in particular because like another indicator that that um to me was also that I like, really enjoyed spending time with them and I really wanted to and mm. also the fact that when I saw them even if they were I would be able to pick up conversation where that's like it was never really awkward so mm. I think that was also quite a big indicator but mm. it also depends though because I feel like some friends I felt like sometimes I still had to censor some things that I said so maybe it wasn't so able to, like, I wasn't mm. really able to talk so freely. But then the things which you could say, they were, like, very personal things as well. So that was yeah. nice. 
Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I guess think, it just depends. Yeah, I think the topic thing is like a big thing. Like, I feel like if you have to hold back certain things, then it's not like, well, I wouldn't say it's not a true friendship, but like it's not like the the ultimate type of friendship where you're really able to talk about anything. But to be fair, there's like different types, like I said, and um, yeah, like. I mean, you have different people where you say different things too, right? And I think a big indicator for me also, like for another friend that I got really close to during uni, like I felt like it was the idea that I wasn't really scared of sharing certain hobbies that I enjoyed. Like I wouldn't be scared of uh, like them calling it cringe or stuff <laughs> like that. You know, I think that was a, bit, a big indicator. Like you're you're not scared of like showcasing things you're interested in and like opinions you have and things you do like I think that's a very big indicator but yeah speaking of like the different types of friendships that you share things with I feel like we can talk about the different types of like level of friends you have in your life so like for me I think there's sort of like levels so you have like okay people you don't talk to (laughs) and then you have acquaintances and then like friends good friends and then like close friends and probably like super close friends I think that would be like the levels I have I don't know if it's the same for you for me it's like circles I I guess it's the same but it's just that it's circles because sometimes the circles I think I like to group my friends as well so then because it's it's like a circle of like very close friends and then uh, friends and then acquaintances but then within very close friends there's like different bubbles like Venn diagram style bubbles because different friend groups know different people and then like with me in the middle so I think for me like the difference would be that to me it's very important to have a group around the friend like or maybe I just that's how Mm. I make friends I like to have make friends with groups of people instead of um the relationship being like a uh, just a one-to-one thing that's actually an interesting topic we can discuss because you prefer groups and I prefer one-to-one but what makes you like groups better I think it's just the fact that mm, this is quite bad but it could it could be because I just don't want it to be awkward like, I think it's, I always think it's less awkward when it's a group setting, even if that's not true. Like, I feel like COVID has forced me to realize that that's not true because, like, talking to people in group setting is actually way worse than talking to someone one on one, like online I at agree. least. I agree. But in person, <laughs> like, I feel like groups are still cool because then you can, like, if, you, if one person doesn't want to do this thing, then you can ask other people in the group and then you can always, like, talk about things together. But at the same time, like, you, you know that you can always do the same activity together. I don't know. I think it's different, but I, I prefer groups. But you, but I think it's also like you have a, there's difference when you talk to a friend one-on-one, right? Like, for example, like talking to me now, like it won't be awkward, but like it also depends on the setting and like who you're hanging out with, right? Yeah. Maybe groups is like a defense mechanism kind of because it's, I don't want it to be awkward. So then I would rather have a group that, to always fall back on and then when I get mm. very close to someone then I realize that one-on-one is actually okay but oh, okay I, I think I've always operated this way like even from high school it's very important to me to have a group of friends wherever at whatever school I was in even mm. if one even if I was closer to some people that compared to others okay so I think I'm definitely different because I think I never operated in a group friendship thing I just find them very a little bit problematic um, mm. sometimes it's troublesome yeah so yeah so I guess talking about like my history like I think in kindergarten primary school I was the type to find a person that I really liked and then I would just like hang on to them mm. and then we would walk around and do everything together which is me and this other person that I'm like apparently BFS at the time with so this was how I acted when I was like really young and then going into a uh, secondary school like sort of changed in a way that I still have this one person, one person, one person that I'm really close with. Mm. But every time I hang out, it's just with that specific one person. The weird thing is I I never, they never hang out in a group because they're not friends with each other. So like they know each other, but they Mm. wouldn't, they're not friends and they wouldn't hang out with each other. And I'm only like the middle person that I would hang out with like only one of them. And I never hung out in groups because I just felt like, because in my secondary school, there were large groups. And I just felt like the girls who were in groups, like they always talked behind each other's backs. And I felt like that was really bad. Maybe it was because it was a big group. But I just feel like because there's so many inner dynamics within friend groups that are like 
larger than say for example like three people then you have inner dynamics between different people and i just feel like it's always so hard to navigate and i feel like even being friends with one person you need to put in a lot of effort to maintain that and i just feel like if you have to also deal with other things then it's really tiring so i always hung out with one person like at at two people at most like i think the largest group i had in secondary school was like three people in a group but even then i still preferred hanging like one-on-one because then i know i can talk about like very deep conversations that were very personal to like that specific person and i just feel like the relationship's more intimate for me i think what about like the people that those friends were friends with though didn't you yeah hang out with them and yeah, yeah so the people that i was like really close with like the one person they all each had their friend group which is really weird because they all had their friend groups, but I wasn't really part of their group. It's not like I was excluded. I just wasn't really in that group. So they kind of say, for example, one person I was friends with, they were friends with me and that would be like one-to-one. And then they would also have their group of friends, which is like, I don't know, four to five people. But the thing is, I can still hang out with their group of friends, but it's like, if they had a group chat, I probably wouldn't be in it. You know what I mean? So like hang out, they can hang out with me, but I'm not mad because I know I'm not in that group. And I probably... I don't really crave to be part of that group. I'm just saying that I can still hang out with that group, but I'm not really like a member of it. Yeah. You know? Well, I think that's that's cool then. As in, it's different because I like, I really hate not being, I think I have very bad FOMO. I really hate not being in groups. So like You don't, you don't want to miss like, out on things and so you want to be part of like a group where you belong in. Yeah, I like knowing that I belong somewhere, I think. I'm like not comfortable not knowing where I land. Mm. or like not, okay. not even knowing like if I had to choose oh for example oh I feel like, like this is a very stupid but very high school relevant example like if I had to go on a school trip and the rooms were in fours or six I had to know like who the people in the room were gonna be you know well yeah that's the same for me but okay maybe maybe it's different because I think for me like if that was the scenario I'd probably just be like oh my god I just need to be with like my closest friend in that room and that's all I care about yeah. Whereas for me, like it, it will, it will, like I want to know the each people. Like I want to know the three people already because we all get along already. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. I mean, right. not saying that's the main reason for it, but I like knowing like, where that. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I guess this also makes me think about like. So I know you say you like groups. Do you think each? So I, I assume, I'm assuming you have multiple group of friends. So do you think like each group does different things and that serves like different parts of your personality? I I think so. I mean, I think it's very important to have different friends for different reasons. So yeah, definitely. Mm. I think I definitely, yeah. because it, I'm quite utilitarian, so therefore, yeah, different friend groups serve different things. Like for example, the drinking group is for drinking and also doing fun things with. And then like the architecture group is for studying and also talking about architecture stuff or cooking, mm. which is what we like to do. And yeah, and then there are other groups for just like miscellaneous friends, mm. people that I like. Yeah, I think it's the same for me. But the only difference is instead of group, it's like a, a one person. <laughs> I think that's like the fundamental difference between us. So yeah, I have a person that I talk mostly architecture, academic stuff, creative stuff with. And then a friend that I have a lot of fun with. And another friend that I can talk about really deep emotional things we feel with. So yeah, actually, I, I want to bring this point up because the I think the thing that we have in common is that we have a group of friends that are in common. And I think this is sort of like the first official group of friends that I have oh. that is that it's like really group vibe because previously I don't really have that. And that sort of makes me see the difference of like how a group Don't you like it? Here. No, I like it. I like it. It's just I see the difference of like how it okay. functions differently. You know what I okay, mean? Okay, one of the, I think, try to articulate the differences. Okay, so for example, like, I think with things, it's harder to plan because if it's two people only, mm. you just say, I'm free this time, I'm free that time. But then when there's, like, more than, like, four to three, four people, then you actually have to, like, make a time. And usually it gets really annoying because, like, not everyone has the same schedule and, e- and it gets even harder if there's, like, time difference, say, like, if you want to have a call then it's really difficult and then sometimes I also feel like there's like what I said like inner dynamics in a group and I feel like sometimes it's like hard to figure out so like I feel like sometimes there's subgroups in like a big group and then I find that it's not bad but it's just sort of like a thing that I've observed like because I feel like if you have a group, group of people not everyone gets along with another person to the same level 
So there's yeah. going to be people that you get closer with more compared to the mm. other people. It's kind of like I'm the closest to you in that group of mm. people. So yeah, there's just sort of like inner dynamics that you have to observe and like look out for just to see like how the entire friendship group is doing and then like what activities that everyone likes and then like what topics can we all talk about in this particular setting. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's really exhausting, but it's not because I mean, everyone has a group of friends, so it's like not that bad, but it's just some things I picked up on and observed in comparison to if you were just one on one with one person. Yeah, you're friends with. I think something that would, that is quite limiting in groups is like you know, making sure that it's a topic which everyone can talk about, especially when the group is very niche. If it's not okay, so, sometimes I feel like there's categories of groups, so like so, some groups are for going are doing things and some groups are for talking about things and especially in talking about things groups like they have to be very well like everyone has to get along so that their topics in common if not there are not many things to talk about if it's like an activity group if it's like oh we hang out because we all want to go drinking then you don't need to have anything much in common yeah so I think it's definitely different and I think for the kind way you talk about things it's quite it's almost more interesting when everyone is one has a one-on-one relationships already because then you have different um, things to talk about with different people. Yeah, I think that's true. Because, I, I mean, sometimes when our group of friends talk, like, it really needs to be a topic that we all know about. Otherwise, it'll just be, like, certain people talking because if you don't know much about the topic, then you're just kind of there, like, oh, okay. You but know? the whole point of hanging out in a group is so, so that, like, it can facilitate one-on-one. Things. Yeah, and also it can facilitate one-on-one conversations within mm-hmm. the group. Yeah, I agree. So I guess that's like one purpose of the friendship. But I think as we all grow older, there's like way there's like a lot of other reasons to have friends. Because in in primary school and high school, a lot of it's like just to get through the day. You need friends. Then when mm, you go home, yeah. you don't really need them anymore. But then in uni, it's like <laughs> because you rely on them. And I think especially now when I'm applying for jobs and stuff, and and then getting older, it's a lot. It's also coming to like because you want to expand your network you want to know what people do and what people like and then tr- yeah. if they will help you in your future career yeah actually i watched a video about this it was from the school of life and they were talking about like the purpose of friendship like why do we need friends in life and they kind of like separate it into different categories that i thought were really interesting just to like talk about and analyze them so the first one is networking so kind of like what you talked about i think this is sort of like the type of friendship like our like parents also have like they're friends with like people from a certain area or industry and then say if like their kids want to do like internships then they kind of like point them towards that industry and then they can have internships so like those type of friendships the thing is i don't know i sometimes i feel like oh is this like really shallow you know just to like be friends with them for like you know future value of like oh like what if i need something from them and they're like in that industry you know for me, I feel like I can't do it because I think, I don't know, I think it's really tiring if you don't actually derive value from that friendship, but you're still hanging on to them for like a potential like value in the future that you might need for networking's sake. I don't know if you feel the same way. I think now that I've done a few internships, I really find see the value in networking though. And I'm really, uh, I think especially this is quite obvious to me because in among the Malaysian group in uh, UCL and then there are a few dominant schools and I feel like the fact that you go to some of the dominant schools means that you already know people whom you can reach out to if you want to for example ask them about how they got an interview for a certain company or like how they got through the year or what they did to get a first or like what career path so I feel like networks are actually really important and I think that how I think about it to make it not seem shallow is that they also want to know me for the same reason. Oh, okay. So it's like a reciprocal thing as if we okay. both derive value in that way. So it's not like I have to maintain the friendship. I just have to like connect with them on LinkedIn and then in the future, if I need to, I can message them. Okay, yeah. I guess if you say it that way, then I guess it's not as bad. Like if you both derive the same level of value from each other, then I think it's okay. And I think networking is definitely like a valuable thing. I think I definitely have a few friends like that. Like, in different fields and I just think it's interesting to see what they're doing and even like within the the realm of architecture like you know a lot of different people I think it's really nice um so yeah I, but I think some a lot of these friends kind of like go towards the friend slash acquaintance area which is not a bad thing it's just like an observation I see but you know I, I think definitely like making friends for that reason alone 
can sometimes be a bit strange. For example, like when you first meet people, sometimes people are very overly friendly and kind of like really <laughs> close to you. And then it's like so a bit strange, but uh, I guess it just depends how people go about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So the second thing is reassurance. I think this is a really good point, at least for me, like I can relate to it a lot. So this point is kind of about like knowing that we're all struggling. So it's kind of like when you're struggling with someone, you need the reassurance from a third party, like a friend to like comfort you, like kind of just be there for you and validate your emotions and your feelings that you're struggling. And I think this is a really big one because I think when we're all struggling, we want someone to be there and tell us that like, it's okay that we're struggling, we're gonna get through it and they can see us struggle and validating us. And I think that was a really big thing for our group, especially like, cause we all study architecture, like we can all understand each other's struggles. And I think that also might be something that what made us like have, have a stronger bond because we can help each other when we're struggling and we reassure each other that we can make through it when we're struggling, you know? Yeah, I guess it's like the friends that you make at, at work, like even later on, colleagues and stuff. But I was not sure how reliable this would be. Like, for example, your high school friends, I guess, or my high school friends, some of them have fallen into this category. And then after high school, it just like dies off because you're no longer mm. in the same environment. It's quite environment driven. Yeah, I think it's kind of, I, I guess this also goes with the different type of friends thing. Because if your friends are kind of like, because you went to the same school together, the same course, then yeah, you have that. And then I think definitely like once the environment or you graduate, then it can fizzle out. But then I think if it's with more personal things, like, like emotional struggles you're dealing with in like everyday life, then definitely it. I think that would be like a long term thing, you know. Like say if I'm dealing with lots of personal things and then I want to confide in someone, and then like knowing that there's someone there for me to reassure me, I think that would be that would mean like a long term friendship for me. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's definitely very helpful to have people to complain to, also because people bond over complaining. Yeah, scientifically proven. So, <laughs> yeah. And the third one is having fun. So I think we all both talked about it already. Like you say, like your group of friends who like go for drinking. And then like, I have a friend that, you know, we just do lots of crazy things together and like go out and just have fun. So yeah, I think it's fun because I think the point they made is like, well, as we grow up, like life expects us to be mature adults. So we're kind of fallen with a lot of responsibilities that we have to act a certain way and like, have prestige, like, do great jobs, and then, like, be really responsible. But then, like, when you hang out with these type of people, it's kind of like you don't have to care about that image and try to be a mature person. You just, you know, revert revert back to, like, I don't know, teenage self or, like, kid, and then you just have fun, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's important in that way. Definitely, but also can be quite damaging, like, depending on how it is. Because, I mean... (laughs) depending on what you do together if it's like drugs <laughs> and stuff then it's different well, yeah, I have some yeah. friends who are like super that's how that's what they bond over yeah smoking up but oh it yeah just if, if that's your hobby then then it's fine so that's like what you like to do yeah depends on what type of fun you're having <laughs> but yeah hopefully the healthier type of fun but anyways moving on so the last one they talked about is clarifying our thoughts And this one was more about, like, having conversations. So I think this is the one I relate with the most, actually. Like, they were saying, it's like having someone to talk to as an outlet. And I think that was sort of what I said in the beginning. Like, I feel like having valuable conversations is what I think means the most to me in a friendship. So I think this is probably the point I relate to the most. Like, just being able to talk about, like, your opinions, your thoughts, like, what you're dealing with and then like how you feel about certain things I think this is really important to me so I, th- I think that's also why like I really enjoy like having this podcast because I feel like we're having really meaningful conversations and yeah it's just nice to clarify our thoughts and then like see things in a new perspective so yeah so I guess to summarize for me though those categories are fine but I think that I do think that I kind of agree as in like that 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 should be friends for different purposes and that so for me I guess the main purposes for me would be to have fun and also to talk about stuff the rest kind of like falls in between Mm -hmm. yeah so like networking and reassurance kind of like if it happens then it's just something that happens it's not something that I actively pursue when I look for a friendship 
Fair enough. I think we talked about like mostly about people we get along with and like what purpose they serve in our life, but we we didn't really uh, touch on the topic of because we meet so many different people and sometimes like I think some people want to be friends with us or we want to be friends with them, but the other party don't reciprocate in the same way. I'm just sort of thinking about, I guess this also goes into the topic of like maybe like toxic friendships and things like that, like recognizing red flags. Do you think you have the ability to filter out people as friends who like don't fit in with you? Or I don't know, like just how do you approach this whole topic, I guess? Yeah, I think that you have a better ability to do this than me because... (laughs) Thank you. I do like people a lot in general, but I think I, I... I do have the ability after a certain point, but it has to be after a point where I realize that it's bad for me. So either, I think how I measure this is like either I am bored and I would actually rather be doing this activity by myself, then I know like, okay, this is not a great friendship. Or also like I, it's hurting me and making me like a worse person. Like I don't like the version of myself when mm. I'm with that person so I think that's how I felt uh, how about you? yeah because I remember there was one time like you were I guess complaining or confiding in me about someone and you were asking me about like the value of that friendship and then you were sort of asking me like oh maybe this is for like potential future I guess the value was like oh maybe this was like good for networking and like should I continue like because you were kind of confused and like you didn't know how to act and then you're like oh but what if they change in the future and then I remember having this conversation with you saying that like if you need to expect someone to change in the future in order to like be more okay with the friendship then it's probably not a good friendship because then you're sort of expecting the person always to change and the thing is a person can't change in like one day for you yeah yeah so it's just sort of balancing and like figuring out how much value you actually derive from the friendship in order to like sacrifice yourself not being yourself to like actually serve yourself you know so yeah yeah and then continuing with the topic of you saying that i'm actually better which thank you a lot that i'm better at um filtering out people i think it's just maybe a skill that i developed gradually um based on like past experiences with friends that maybe didn't work out um due to like various reasons i think now when i see acquaintances i think i have a better intuition of like seeing who I actually get along with better like it's sort of like having the click and like if I really vibe with someone then I kind of know based on my instincts like I knew know that I can hang out with them or like be good friends with them and then that sort of gave me the ability to like call out acquaintances that might not be a fit for me you know like they will just stay acquaintances which is fine like I think acquaintances is an okay stage of like people you you interact with it doesn't mean it's bad it just they don't fit with your personality because i think if the thing is people make it seem like oh if you're not friends then it's bad but to be fair it, it, it's fine because you can't be friends with everyone and not everyone's personality matches with each other it doesn't mean there's wrong anything wrong with you or the other person it's just that it didn't work out so i think it's good for people to just keep that in mind and and that also made me realize that having lots of like close friends as at least for me it's like more valuable than having like a huge group of friends and even if you have like less close friends and you need to spend time alone because there's a difference between being alone and feeling lonely i think like if you're alone like spending time in solitude also makes you learn more about yourself as well and i think that's really important because you're a different person when you're with your friends and you're different when you're alone and i think if you're not constantly hanging out with people and you spend time with yourself you're also able to learn more about yourself and i think that's really important yeah i really get that which is why i feel like especially after we talked about this kind of things and I start to realize if I'd rather be alone then that's a really bad sign but I think also <laughs> it's, it's it's tough to do that when you're in a friend group which it maybe is, goes to why I prefer groups and you prefer one-on-ones because in a friend group it's hard to call friendships because you're you're in the group together so even if you don't oh, get yeah. along with someone in particular it's like you rather just not deal with it just know that you don't really get along and then it's fine you just hang out in the group anyway but do, do you ever feel like that's an issue? Do you ever have like an example where you're in a group and then you actually don't like one person that much, but you just kind of force yourself to stay in the group because yeah, for the course. sake of the group? Not like I don't like the person. It's just like I don't get you along don't them as well as the rest. Okay. Yeah. Which, which is why 
I think as I grew older, I realized like then therefore hang out in this group might not be like the best use of my time as it it might not be I don't enjoy it as much therefore I would reduce it if I can mm. and try mm. to organize more like one-on-one things or just try to get around it get to know the person maybe yeah yeah actually your point of like reducing time also kind of brings me to my next point of like keeping in touch with friends I feel like this is a big thing because the thing is when whenever we make friends it's like in a certain environment you make friends with whatever friends you make and then because you're kept in that environment for a set amount of time then you're able to keep hanging out with them for example like i don't know primary school secondary school university you're always in that environment so you're able to hang out with them but it's like once you pass that stage of being in that environment there comes the question of should you keep in touch like how long should you keep in touch you know yeah so what type of factors do you consider when you need to consider this question for a certain people um well i think that's a good question because i don't think i think about it that much but it's i think i think it comes very instinctually which is not great so i think i think about it more to be honest it's like if i gain value from the conversation so Mm -hmm. if i gain value from talking to them every week i think a lot of it is very instinctual so like if i if something happens in my life and i think oh i have to tell this person so then therefore I call that person maybe like once a week. So I think for me, it's like once a week, it's like the max. Well, well there's also like every other day, but that's like only for my mom, which is different. So then once a week is the max. And then after that, it's like once in um, once a month, once in six months. Mm. And others is just like whenever we see each other. And I think it just depends on, well, I think for me, it always goes back to utility. So it just depends on whether I would gain value from it. Have yeah. to them. And whether it comes, whether it's easy to organize. So if I think it's too, there's like too high a chance of me being rejected, then I also don't try. Fair enough. Actually, I don't think using instincts is a bad thing. Because I think a lot of like friendships or even just human relationships in general, like comes down really to gut feeling. Because the whole intuition of like, oh, we just clicked. It's basically like trusting your gut feeling. There's not much anal- analysis going on there. So it's totally fine to just base it off your instincts. Because I think that's sort of what I do as well. But then sometimes it's just... I think for me, like, when people want to hang out, sometimes I'm like, oh, do I really derive value from, like, doing this outing with them when I could be using my time to do other things that might be more valuable to me, per se? So sometimes I think about that. But I think usually with keeping in touch with people... Mostly, I think, I think the biggest thing for me is that, like, if I don't talk to them in a long time, I can still pick up the conversation from, like, where we last left it off. I think was a really big indicator of, like, how strong the friendship is. So, I think for, like, with, with, with what you said, like, you need to talk to them, like, every week. I think for a lot of my friends, actually, that's really not the case. Like, for some of my closest friends, we can not talk for, like, months and we can still be really close friends. Like the next time we text or we meet up, we can talk about so many things and like catch up on things that we like didn't talk about during the times that we didn't talk. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. But some, but one thing I wanted to mention is like with drifting apart, like it definitely happens. I think it a lot of it comes down to people just growing up and like growing apart because I think I have this friend from my secondary school, like we were really close. But yeah, as we both went into uni, we just really, like, I feel like I grew a lot in uni and I started considering a lot of different things, whereas I felt like she didn't consider the same same things that I considered as we grew older. So I think in that sense, like, our values really changed and we didn't really think the same things were important in the same way. I think because when we were in secondary school, we were all still, like, you know, teenagers, little kids, I don't know, like, we... We were just innocent and then we didn't really care much. And then in uni, I just grew a lot. So in that sense, we drifted We drifted apart a little bit because I felt like she didn't understand the things that I deemed was important. So I think some things like that, I think it's just how life is. Like in some ways, like people just drift apart. Even for some of my friends in primary school, like because of the difference in culture and the schools we went to, like that sort of just results in us drifting apart which is fine like it's no one's fault it's just sort of what happens in life so I think it's just important to bear that in mind because I think a lot of people feel guilty that they drifted apart with their friends and they're like oh is it my fault but it's just life happens you know yeah but I think I I am part of the category which 
feels guilty. Therefore, I like to reach out and see if there's anything there anyway. If we are like both in the same city or if we are mm. both free anyway. I think it's, it's nice still to try. But also, I get what you mean about there having to be more intention when you spend your time. Because after all, like, <laughs> for me also, it's like spending money. So I think especially in London when everything's so expensive sometimes I'm like oh do I really want to go for a meal and then go for drinks and spend like 20 pounds to talk to this person and sometimes the answer is no and therefore yeah rather not so I think it's good to have like um, a sense of the value of your time as well and to make friends with intention yeah that's true like I never really thought about the value of your time actually no I think the value of time is really important too when you make friends because it's like you always need to think about how much value your time has and like what sort of things you want to use with your time. And I think sometimes the way of, for me measuring things is like after I hang out with a person, I'm like, did that conversation really made me learn something new or did I derive any value from that conversation? That usually sort of makes the measuring point or like the benchmark of how much value I think is in this friendship between me and this other person, you know? And yeah, I think if you're the if you're the type of person that feels guilty for people drifting apart, I think it's good to just like thank them for the experience too. Like I guess like within yourself. And yeah, I think reaching out to them is also like a nice way because I think with someone in my primary school, I also reached out to them and you know just talked. And it's like if after that experience, you can still hang out and do different things, then yeah, it's fine. But if not, it's also fine because I think if the hangout was pleasant then I think it's already good enough because you still have to catch up and you learn stuff from the other person for all the years that you didn't catch up yeah yeah but I also think like with the reaching out thing like a big part of it is also just making sure that you reflect the same energy that they do or to me also a lot of it's like reading their energy so it even if it's very shallow things like how they text you back and how fast they text you back and whether it's with enthusiasm or not it really matters a lot to me yeah (laughs) actually it's quite small things yeah, actually, this is a really good point because I think a lot of people can label that as, like, being really petty. But I think it's a really big thing, especially if this happens, like, all the time. It builds up. I think, okay, nowadays, like, texting is a big thing, but I feel like the energy you feel in texting, like, really matters a lot because that kind of shows your enthusiasm and, like, how much effort you're willing to put into the friendship. Like, if they leave you on red like a lot of times when it's definitely in the middle of a conversation or they don't reply you I think it's not really about being petty it's just about the level of respect they have for you like if they don't even have the decency or respect to respond or you know respond in the same amount of energy then I don't think the friendship is worthwhile in that way yeah but I also think that there's also value in like some people just are bad texters and sometimes if you confront them about it I've actually done this a few times like ask them like (laughs) why do you not reply in the same way and then it really helps because they'll they'll just like come uh they just get to talk about the way that your different communication styles and then Mm. really clarify why you like understand where the person is coming from as well yeah I think it's true and I think this also brings us to like a painful topic of like what if you think that you don't really have value as this friend anymore and then like you know I don't know it's like uh, I, I think it's a painful thing like sometimes I feel like sometimes friend breakups are like more painful than like romantic <laughs> breakups I don't know because it's a platonic friendship and like you don't really want to cross the line or anything but then but because it's like kind of gray area so you don't most people don't really know how to approach it because it's so platonic I guess yeah do you ever have experiences with I don't know friend breakups or anything um, I think you have more dramatic friend breakup experiences. <laughs> I don't. I just drift apart. <laughs> yeah, okay. so you can tell your story. Well, it's not really a very dramatic story. I, I think drifting apart is like I think a it's not a good way, but like it's definitely one way to like that's le- less dramatic for a friendship to like fizzle out and just end. I think with mine, it was mostly it made me gain the ability to guess if I, I get along with this person better. So essentially what happened with like my friendship was that this person just ended the friendship without telling me why. So one day this person just texted me and said that they no longer wanted to be my friend. And 
they didn't give any really explanation. They said a lot of um, excuses about how we're going to be going to different universities and take care of ourselves. So, and I was very confused because I didn't know what exactly the reason was. Like, I have a few guesses, but I don't know because this person didn't tell me. And I think the thing I realized is that communication was so important and that if this person didn't have the dis- decency and respect to at least tell me the reason of why they wanted to end the friendship, then was there really any value in the friendship to begin with? You know? Mm. So I think this made me realize that I think being respectful and being open to communication, no matter how much the other person has hurt you, I think just having the respect to communicate and be honest about what's bothering you about the other person i just think that being honest with your friend is just good you know like it saves a lot of built up hatred or built up resentment in the long run but i think that's where we are like quite different because i prefer to just let it just fizzle out and to (laughs) reply slow and slower that kind of thing (laughs) which is quite bad but I'm very anti-confrontational I think there's definitely different ways to do it and I think it also depends on like the person and the other party because I think sometimes people just want to drop a hint and if the other person doesn't get it then you kind of just have to like yeah either confront or like make it really really obvious that dramatic (laughs) yeah 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 that's true. Mm-hmm. So I guess to sum up, like, I guess to sum up, we would just, you could just go through, I guess, like, the criteria of being a good friend and also what you think are some red flags. Yeah, I think friends obviously are really important in my life. And I think the most important thing for me and a friend is that you're able to talk about anything because I think for me, the value of friendship comes the most from the quality of our conversations and the amount of value I derive from them and also the fact that you're able to completely be yourself and act crazy or hysterical you know just being completely free of yourself and not be not being afraid that they would judge you for anything you do or say and yeah and I think sort of the the red flags that I think in a friend that you should look out for is if they are hiding certain things or they don't talk to you about certain things that they're doing or say like for the messaging, they like leave you hanging, they don't respond to you, they don't reciprocate this amount of energy. And it's builds up over time. So definitely I'm not saying be petty and if they do it one time, then get mad. But like looking at the different patterns of like what actually happens and the dynamic between you. And I think actually this is one thing that we didn't really talk about, but if they talk behind other people's backs that they're friends with, I think this is a big red flag because I feel like if they talk about their other friends behind their back, that means they're going to talk about you behind your back. So I yeah. don't really like that if I see that in uh, a person. I would really yeah. move away from that person because I think that's just a lot of negative energy and I don't want that in my life. So yeah, that's mm-hmm. sort of what I would sum up for me. I mean, oh, I'm way more tolerant of negative energy than you. But anyway, I think, yeah, so it goes back to me being quite utilitarian, like having parents of different reasons. So the reasons would be for ha- having fun and also for knowing where I belong, like having people to fall back on and then also for people to talk to and learn from. And then the bad things, I guess, to look out for for me is generally just if I don't like them, as in I would rather be by myself or the energy like it's making me tired hanging out with them and mm. I would rather do other things with my time yeah but also if they're like being toxic yeah I know we said we would wrap this up with the conclusion but I just feel like we didn't talk about the negative thing and I think it might be just nice to talk about that at the very end because I think it's also interesting because you said you were more tolerant to negative energy than me yeah do you want to like elaborate <laughs> I think because I also I, I, I get it like I bond over gossip and over complaining about things and people like that's how I find mm. common ground so I think like if people do that then I understand where they're coming from and I understand that this is how you can also begin to build a friendship but I think I'm more tolerant of it for a while like I'm tolerant of it for longer than you but after a certain point because I don't want it to become the only thing that we talk about. And also sometimes with some people, it just becomes so draining that it's making me feel like a worse person for doing it. And that's when I start to distance myself. So I think I'm tolerant of it as like a relationship building device, but Mm. not if that's what the whole friendship is about. Yeah, I can get that. I think definitely because as we've said, like complaining about things is one thing that people bond over. 
But I think for me, there's also like a limit to how much you can complain because I think I really don't like complaining about things. I prefer to see the good side of things and like keep myself in a positive and optimistic state. So yeah, we can complain about school. Like I think I bond with you over complaining about like the amount of schoolwork, the amount of pressure we feel. Like we just complain about those things. And I think it's completely fine. Like we want to have an outlet to vent about things that we're not happy about. And I think that's completely fine. But I think for me, it's like once you reach the point of that you're actually just personally attacking another person but you're still friends with them on the surface I think that's where I really draw the line and say I can't do it because it's really draining for me and I can't stand the negative energy that comes from the relationship we built by talking about these things yeah I think it's good that you know that what the limit is because sometimes I think for me the idea of the person clouds the fact that they are making me feel worse or the need to be with someone because I feel lonely is overpowers the fact that they are not good as a friend. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's a good summary of like our thoughts on friends. And I think everyone has different experiences of like their friendship. So I think it's nice to just share it because I think even between me and you, like we have different styles of making friends and there's probably like more styles out there. Like there's just the two of us. So yeah, I think it's just really interesting to see different perspectives of like what people think about friends and stuff. So yeah, it was really interesting to have a talk with you. And yeah, yeah, I hope this was an interesting conversation for our listeners too. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.